I'm joined by one of the biggest stars of this year's IPL, Shane Watson. Shane, thank you for speaking to India Today Group. Uh, nice little break that you're enjoying after the IPL, uh, before the T20s and T10s, all of that stuff starts. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I've had a, a really nice break so far. Um, you know, after a really exciting IPL um, campaign with um, Chennai Super Kings, it's been really nice to be able to have a have a break. Um, you know, get away from get away from cricket for a while. Um, you know, spend some real quality time with my with my family. Um, my wife and I went on a bit of a, a little holiday after the IPL as well. Um, and now it's you know time to have a, a bit of a tr fitness training block as well, leading into. Um, the Big Bash or the T10 and then the Big Bash starting. Mm -hmm. um, but also it gives me time to be able to work on, um, you know, my life after cricket as well. So, yeah. you know, one of the reasons why I'm here in, um, in India for this time is actually, you know, talking about my uh, performance coaching business that I've set up with um, a performance, you know, world expert performance coach from the US and also Ian Thorpe, mm -hmm. the Olympic swimmer. The formats are getting shorter and the bats bigger. <laughs> yeah, for me they are, yeah. Um, Look, I wouldn't say my bats are getting bigger. I'm saying I'd say they're getting better. Yeah. Um, you know, the last three years since I've been with SG, the bats that I've got are incredible. Um, but yeah, to be able to play you know, the T20 format is um, is a lot of fun. It's a lot uh, better on the body as well, even though at times I struggle. Um, but now, yeah, having opportunity to be able to play T10, that's going to be very interesting to see how that you know the dynamic mm -hmm. of that game sort of has changed compared to T T uh, T20. But I'm just loving this opportunity I have at, you know, at this stage of my career to be able to continue to play in world-class tournaments, um, you know, like like and have so much fun like I did during the IPL. Yeah, and uh, in fact, uh, MS Dhoni, I heard him a few days ago, and he was saying that you guys hardly slept after that IPL final, having early breakfast, and then you know all that celebration. Mm. Yeah, no, we didn't sleep yeah. uh, really at all. It's just it was one of those um, moments, and I've been very fortunate in my career career to be able to have a, a few of those moments where you just don't you don't want to actually you don't want the day to end. Um, because it's such a you know such a huge high, um, and you know I owe a lot to MS um, Dhoni for how he, um, well, just gave me the confidence, gave me the opportunity, but also um, really cared for me um, as well, especially the back end of the tournament when he knew um, I had a few niggles here and there, and he really looked after me incredibly well. So I certainly didn't want that day to end um, after the final. So yeah, we didn't we didn't get much sleep at all, going straight to breakfast, and we um, had a lot of fun as you know very. Ex special experience to be able to play with the Chennai Super Kings, but especially be able to get to know um, MS. MS um, was um, one, of my, one of my true highlights. And the kind of form that you showed in this year's IPL and when you went, went back home, almost everyone wanted you back in the Australian colours, um, and especially the kind of, uh, you know, sorry state of affairs that the Australian cricket is going through mm -hmm. right now. The team is not performing well, and there's another World Cup which is coming up in 2019. And, the, you know, people were saying, come back from retirement. <laughs> Look, I'm well retired. I'm, uh, I'm absolutely loving yeah, the stage of my life that I'm in. Uh, I was very fortunate to have a, you know, a, a long career, Australian career, an international career. Um, and look, now it's now it's for the next generation to be able to, to step up. You know, we're going through a you know, tough time at the moment with you know, the things that have sort of been around over the last six months. But you know, norm, every time there's a, a time in Australian cricket where you know the chips have been down. There's always been a rebuilding phase, you know, to get back to the top again. And there's no, you know, we're in great hands with Justin Langer to be able to rebuild it. He's a perfect guy to be able to make sure that he, you know, he turns turns things around. And well, I know they will turn it around. It just sometimes it takes a little bit longer than other times to be able to turn it around. Do you think that Indian cricket has been really lucky because they've went through similar transformation after the likes of Dravid, Lakshman, Sachin retired? Mm -hmm. But when you know someone like Ricky Ponting or uh, Gilchrist or Hayden retired or you retired uh, from Australian cricket team. The, the replacements haven't been that much talented. Look, it's it's always big shoes to fill. It's like when you know all the, the world-class players that I played with all retired, then it's huge shoes to fill to be able to try and you know, have the same output as a team as what was there before. It's, it's, it's nearly impossible to replicate. Um, and you know, the Indian team you see now with you know, replacing all those great players that you mentioned um, in the Indian team, now, the quality of players that India are producing now, from a batting point of view, obviously their bowling stocks are super strong with their fast bowlers that they've got. Um, and of course, their spin, their spin options as well is, um, is incredible. And that's the reason why you know, they're, they're doing so incredible in all formats. Uh, whereas Australia, Australia at the moment, um, you know, the, the, next, the next sort of run coming through isn't as, isn't as strong as it has been in the past. Um, and well, I know that's something that Cricket Australia are really um, 
working through at the moment is to be able to really try and get that next that next generation coming through to be a lot stronger than what it has been. Um, because our our number one team is is a world class team, but if we have a few injuries, then there's a few more holes in our in our lineup. Uh, the way our under nineteen guys have also performed and the talent pool that we have, do you think that India will be a huge huge force to reckon with? Uh, something like the Australians and uh, you know nineties, the kind of force they were. There's no reason why they won't. Why they won't. Um, you know, and even seeing the the calibre of under nineteen players that played in the IPL this year, yeah. um, you know, we we don't have that quality of um, you know, young players. We've got you know, a number of really talented young players, but not you know, not not many of those guys are playing in like the Big Bash, for example. And the IPLs, you know, is a, has got all world, all the best players in the world coming um, to to India to play in the IPL, and these local Indian under nineteen players are doing really well. So. Um, you know, Pretty sure was um, was brilliant to be able to watch. You know, someone who just gone from dominating under 19 to then playing incredibly well for Delhi was um, you know special to be able to watch. So, look, there's no doubt India's always had a really strong talent pool. Obviously, just by sheer numbers alone, um, compared to Australia, and you know now things are real. It's going to be a you know, Australia, uh, India's going to be hard to beat for the next you know, number of years. For a, you know, it could be. You know, quite a long dynasty just because of the quality of talent that's coming through and the sheer numbers of favourites for 2019 well. World Cup. Oh, well, yeah, why wouldn't they be? Um, yeah, one of the favourites. Obviously, England's playing great one day cricket at the moment, um, and India they've got match winners. They've got match winners everywhere. Yeah, you know, mm-hmm. especially well, especially with the bat, but obviously with the ball as well. They've got match winners as well. So um, that's what you need um, in a World Cup. You need a lot of match winners. Mm-hmm. Um, so when it's someone's off day, someone's there to step up. And um, yeah, and England and and um, and India at the moment have got that. Australia certainly have got that, um, especially when a few of their players come back from from their vacation, their year-long vacation. So um, it's um, it's it's going to be a very interesting World Cup, especially being in England as well, with the conditions being yeah you know, slightly different. You mentioned India and England, and there's a Test series that's starting five Test series, and our entire focus will be on that till uh, probably September 11. Mm-hmm. Your favourites for this uh, India England Test series? Yeah, look, it's look. England haven't been playing the, their best Test cricket at the moment. Obviously, they've been dominating, um, you know, the one, one day cricket especially. So, and um, and I think it's just going to be a great Test for for Virat, for Virat and his team. Um, look, I'd be, I wouldn't be surprised if India won over there. Um, you know, it's a they've definitely got the the talent um, and the techniques and that to be able to do really well over in England. So, I would, yeah, I'd be surprised if India didn't win. Um, just because it seems like, for me, from afar, it seems like it's a bit of a perfect storm of how things have come together for the Indian team with the people that are available. Look, to even contemplate, you know, the selection conundrum that they have at the top of the order mm. is a great problem for India to have. Mm. You know, England and Australia don't really have that problem at the moment where they're trying to fit in, you know, whether it's Shikhar Dhawan, um, Pajara. Pajara and Muri Lavije and KL Rahul. Mm. Like, that's to be able to fit four of those guys, uh, well, four of those guys into three, that's a very good problem to have, which you know, the best teams when they um, have had a long period of success have those problems, and India have got that at the moment. And you've always, uh, you've uh, obviously played a lot of cricket against uh, Stuart Broad and James Anderson. Uh, they're still a huge force to reckon with, but uh, do you think that they can make an impact right now against this Indian team, especially the kind of summer that uh, England has had? Oh, yeah, absolutely. In, in, um, look, especially in English conditions, James Anderson and, and Stuart Broad are as um, as skillful as anyone that you'll play against. Um, you know, with their with their late swing, the way they you know they continue to bowl accurately throughout the whole day. Um, look, you, you never and you never and no one should ever, no one should ever write off a you know write off a champion. So, and they both certainly are. Um, so yeah, I'd, I'd be surprised. I'd be surprised if they you know, didn't have a you know, didn't have a really good tournament as well. And uh, someone like James Anderson, he's got uh, Virat Kohli's number. Uh, he's got him out so many times. It's on his mind that he got uh, just 134 runs in five tests uh, last time India toured England. Yeah, absolutely. Virat's um, yeah, that's he's a very determined guy, and um, there's no doubt that that um, 2014 series would be something that he they learnt from in a big way. Um, you know, from a technical point of view with his game, but also from a mental point of view. Yeah, and he's a guy who's able to adapt to all conditions, as we even saw. Um, I saw personally in Australia him coming out and dominating you know, on the Australian pitches against our fast bowlers. Um, it just shows the calibre of player he is. He knows how to be able to adjust. Just little, little, little technical things 
to be able to you know just turn things around very quickly. So look, I'd be incredibly surprised if Virat hasn't you know, doesn't have a huge series there in, um, in England. Ashwin or Kuldeep, <coughs> if we have to play one spinner. Oh look, I'm not sure. It depends. Obviously, Ashwin's you know is, is an incredible bowler. Um, he's got an incredible record. He provides a lot with a bat as well. Um, but look, I'm not sure. Obviously, Kuldeep is a is an X factor as well, and he did incredibly well in the one day series. So. Look, I'm not, yeah, I'm not sure which way they'll go, but whichever, whichever way they go, it's a, that, again, that's a really good problem to have because they're both, you know, both match-winning bowlers. Uh, while playing IPL, uh, which which Indian young talent really excited you the most? Um, look, I'm going to be honest. Probably my favourite player, and I wouldn't. He's not in, really young, but um, probably my favourite batsman, nearly in the world, probably in the world at the moment, is K.L. Rahul. Um, you know, I just love the way he plays the game. He's so you know, so beautiful to watch. Um, yeah, he does does it so easily, whether it's against fast bowling, the ball swinging around, spin bowling. He's just got all shot options um, and he's got a great defence. So he's, I'd say he's my, I don't know how old he is exactly, probably in his mid, yeah, mid-20s. mid yeah, like Is he a little, a little bit later yeah. older than that? Yeah, but yeah, he's he's incredibly good. So I really, I've got my fingers crossed that he plays in the you know, that test series because I just absolutely love watching yeah, him. Because Michael Vaughan said that he should play all three formats. Oh, absolutely. Mm-hmm. He's someone who just, whether it's T20 like we saw in this IPL, where it's one-day cricket or, or test matches, he's just got all the skills required to be, you know, to dominate um, against all types of bowling. So, look, I personally, I'd just love to see him play because I love watching him play. And a lot of questions here in India are asked about, uh, you know, age. You are performing so well even uh, at this moment. Someone like MS Dhoni, you played along with him and uh, under his captaincy in Chennai Super Kings. Uh, now everyone wants him to be there in the 2019 uh, uh, World Cup, uh, but uh, there have been questions about his strike rate in the recent st- series that is not the same anymore. Um, look, I know, like just you know, seeing MS um, yeah, bat the way he did during the IPL shows that well, he batted as well as I've, I've seen him bat. Um, you know, some of the incredible innings that he played for, for Chennai this year. Um, and look, in the end, the English conditions are, are a little bit different to be able to play here in India. Um, yeah, so, look, I wouldn't, I wouldn't think too much of it. Um, you know, MS is an incredible... You know, look at the things he's done for India so consistently throughout his career. Um, and especially in a World Cup, you want your most experienced players, your match winners there. So, like... For, for India's sake, I think he has, he has to play in the World Cup. I'm sure MS has got that in the back of his mind that he'd love to be able to play there because under pressure, champions stand up and you know, that's what we've seen you know, so often with MS. Uh, someone like Hardik Pandya, he brings so much on the table uh, uh, his, with the bat as well as the ball. I mean, you have been such a great all-rounder. Yeah, look, Hardik provides a, a huge X factor and also balances, balances the team with you know, his quality... Um, fast bowling, um, his variations as well as a bowler in the in the shorter formats, but also you know his match winning ability with a with a bat. Um, you know whether it's a, a cameo in the shorter formats or you know in Test cricket as well. So, and he's only you know he's, he's a developing all rounder. He's it takes a while to be able to mature because you're doing both skills and you're, you're trying to progress them at the exact same rate. But it doesn't it doesn't exactly happen like that depending on you know, where the different aspects of your game's at. So it does take a little bit of time to find exactly the right balance for you to be your best con- consistently. Um, and and you know, for me, it you know, took, some, took quite a bit of time to be able to really find that, what that balance is. Uh, but Hardik's an incredibly talented guy, as we've seen. He's an amazing athlete. He provides a huge X factor in all formats. So there's no doubt that in, at, at some stage, you'll find that consistency. And once he finds it, he'll maintain it. And fitness versus talent, a lot of focus on yo-yo test here. Uh, you know, someone like Ambati Raidu not being selected just because he failed the yo-yo test. Yeah, I think that's so, ridiculous. Yeah. I think that's ridiculous. In the end, cricket's a skill-based game. Mm-hmm. I understand if your fitness then starts to affect your skills, if, if you're not performing because of your fitness. But Ambati Raidu, as we saw yeah, no. in, in the IPL, he's an incredibly skillful player mm-hmm. um, against all types of bowling. Mm-hmm. So th- those guys don't just don't just appear out of nowhere. So I think that's, yeah, I think that's absolutely ridiculous. So I understand that there's got to be a baseline, but the baseline absolutely should be as soon as your fitness is starting to affect your performance, that's when you don't get picked. Not actually, well, you have to hit a certain, a certain, num- a certain number, otherwise 
well, it doesn't matter how good your skill is. They, why don't they just go and get a marathon runner or a, or a triathlete to be able to come and do the yo-yo test? And obviously he'll nail it, but he's got no cricket skill, so what's the point? Thank you for speaking to Internet today. Thank you so much. Thank you so much.